Hello everyone and welcome to The Icon. Usually on our show we have personalities who's inspired us in various ways. Today, as we all sit here, I know that uh, we all have this major concern, a concern that's taken the world by storm. Uh, and yes, I'm talking about COVID-19. And to ease out all those concerns, we have a personality who's uh, handled it right from its roots. I have with me microbiologist, Dr. Anup Sinha. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Dr. Anup, uh, talking about COVID-19 or the infamous coronavirus, what is all this about COVID-19 or coronavirus? So, coronavirus is actually a group of viruses which can affect human beings and it usually causes a, a disease similar to the common cold. Usually diseases are that mild. But some of the strains can cause life-threatening illnesses. We had the SARS in 2003. And more recently, we had the MERS, MERS, uh, in the Middle East. And right now, we have the COVID-19. COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, and another uh, strain of it. An another another mm -hmm. virulent strain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I understand that the term Corona uh, means something like crown. So is that something to do with the... Uh, is that right? <laughs> uh, yes. When this family of viruses was named, right. uh, the microscopic appearance, it looked as if there were rays radiating out, like the rays from the sun. Mm -hmm. So it was called the coronavirus at that time. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, uh, pardon my ignorance, but I thought uh, this could be, you know, crossing continents and traveling because the world itself has become smaller, and you know, with, with travel made so easy, yes. we're so easily able to go somewhere. Right. So, right. Uh, is that probably the only reason that it's pandemic? And unlike in, a, you know, probably in the past, where it wasn't the case. Yes, with our, in, the, in our modern world, uh, there is always a propensity for infections of the sort to sp spread across several different continents. Just because, like you said, the world is a mm -hmm. much smaller Shrinking, place now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you look at the historical pandemics, mm -hmm. uh, one of the influencer pandemics in the 1800s and 1900s, it took uh, actually several months for them to for the pandemic to spread from to spread. continent to continent and that was via ships right right so still travel is the only yeah. way that it yeah. usually goes yeah mm -hmm. um, well talking about uh, covid there is a lot of misconceptions and uh, unnecessary fear i don't know if i should say unnecessary fear because maybe they're right but what is different to this uh, this virus than something like a common uh, flu well, what you have here is a virus that can spread almost as easily as the common flu or the seasonal flu. Right. But on the other hand, the seasonal flu has a mortality rate around 0.1%. This particular virus, as per current figures as of today, uh, the estimated mortality rate is around 3.4%, 34 times as much. Mm. And it can spread almost as easily as the flu. Yes, I would say that the fear, the concern that we all feel is justified. Right. Oh my God. Okay. Now, now you're putting me in a panic mode. <laughs> and uh, but... I, I would say that uh, panic is never the answer. Right. Yeah. So what, what do you think we should do, you know, to uh, put our minds at ease? This and concern that we feel, decision. this concern that we feel should be channeled into caution. Right. Right. Channeled into caution rather than panic. Because when you panic, you tend to make a lot of irrational decisions and that is not going to help anything. And I see that happening a lot all around the world because uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, crazy purchase going out there. Uh, I don't know if it is uh, crazy right now because sometimes you think, you know, people, people think ahead and plan ahead and maybe they're doing the right thing. But it, it sounds like a scene out of a movie for me. Uh, what, do, what is your thought on it? You're talking about people rushing to buy all, all sorts of masks and 95 yes. masks and all that? Um, well, forget the mask, I will get there. Mm -hmm. But I was referring to people stocking in uh, non-perishable grocery and mm -hmm. all uh, daily daily need items. Uh, and we, we see that the supermarkets are running out of stock. Do you think this is an economic game somewhere out there? 
I don't. This is just people panicking. I don't think any, anybody is deliberately uh, creating creating a, this. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody is uh, sitting hidden, uh, hidden above and pulling the strings. No, I think this is people genuinely panicking. Mm -hmm. uh, while it is understandable, this reaction is understandable. I don't think it is the right reaction because uh, I don't think the supermarkets are going to close. Mm -hmm. We do not. We have had only about seventy-five cases in Australia as of today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it is time. I to think the go fear comes from uh, the fact that most of the goods are produced in China, mm -hmm. and that uh, factories in China may close down, which may mean no more, no more access to supply in Australia. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you see a reason why people are talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 okay. Mm. So, goods have been coming in. Uh, mm. the... I, and I think there is also an irrational fear about touching those goods made in China now. Because they uh, feel... That is actually completely unfounded. Right. Uh, see, the coronavirus can survive this particular virus, it's, uh, which causes COVID-19. Uh, the name of the virus as designated by the WHO is uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. So it is the second uh, episode of SARS. Uh, no, this is much milder than SARS. All right, this is much that's milder comforting. Than SARS <laughs> uh, because SARS had a death rate of 10 to 11 percent mm -hmm. and this is still much lower than that. Right. Yeah. So what are the what? what no, uh, come, come, coming back to what I was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, what we know about coronaviruses is that they can survive on surfaces for a few uh, for, for a few hours to a few days. Right. However, that uh, is dependent on conditions like humidity, temperature, and uh, exposure to sunlight, and a lot of other factors. Now. When something has been shipped over from a different country, it has definitely gone through a range of temperatures, a range of humidity, which is definitely going to kill that particular virus by the time it gets here. Right. So, uh, thinking that you might get infected by opening a package that has arrived from China is mm -hmm. very, very unlikely. Mm -hmm. it is, that, that's a very, very unlikely scenario. Mm -hmm. Back to what we were talking about, the N95 mask. Yes. Um, it looks like uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, stores out there supplying N95 masks and recommending that you wear it so that you protect yourself from um, COVID-19. What is your thought on it? Let's actually go by the WHO recommendations. Right. They say that for this particular outbreak, N95 mask is not recommended for use by lay people. Right. Ordinary mm -hmm. people. Commoners. Mm -hmm. Commoners. Uh, N95 mask is you need it only in hospital in certain situations where they are handling diseases that can be transmitted through the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? In any other circumstance... So medical professionals who are handling people who are suspected to have uh, you know, any, any communicable disease is meant to be using an N95. Diseases that spread through air. So let us say that you have an open case of tuberculosis. Right. Uh, particularly multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Yes, in such situations, people taking care of, or the healthcare workers taking care of that person may need to wear uh, this particular mask when they come into contact with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to actually bring uh, something like this under control? So I think that's the one question that's been you know, eating us. Uh, how long will it take? Fortunately, before? we don't have an answer yet. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we don't have an answer yet. But uh, from from what you have seen in the past, how long does it usually take for something like this to subside and you know come under control? I think the, you know there were so many governments working in unison uh, to bring this under control, and yet so many um, unfortunately ignorant people who do not realize the intensity of the damage they do by not adhering to certain terms and conditions. What is your thought on it? Okay, um, could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, so there is, uh, we understand that uh, this condition is something that is spread spreading across uh, various continents and governments have been working in unison 
to bring it under control. However, the, you see that just because of ignorance, few people are able to you know, bring or introduce it to so many different places. What do you think we need to do? And what do you think, how, how do you think we can uh, exercise more caution? All right, you are asking me about uh, how we, what, what, a person, what we can do to prevent the spread in the community. Right. right? Now, the first thing is understand the symptoms. Uh, most people who get infected, many people who get infected rather, are often asymptomatic without any symptoms, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if at all they do get symptoms, they are pretty mild. Right. You might end up with a mild fever, a slight cough, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But even such people can be contagious to other people, mm. right? So the most important thing that we can do right now is, if you're feeling ill, don't go, go out. Don't go out, stay at home, mm -hmm. if you're feeling ill. If at all you have to go out because there's nobody else there to purchase. So do you mean to say that I, if I have to feel ill and I have no reason why I should contact a COVID-19 and yet I'm feeling unwell, should I take precautions? Or do I think, oh, this could be just another common flu? If you have respiratory symptoms mm -hmm. like cough, running nose, mm -hmm. especially shortness of breath, right. those kind of symptoms, you have to uh, meet up with a healthcare alert, right? You have to you after have to, taking you the necessary health. precautions. Yes. It is very very important to call ahead, call your GP ahead, let them know that you're having these symptoms, mm -hmm. and then do what they say, mm -hmm. go as per the instructions. Because the last thing you want to do is go there and uh, transmit the infection to other people in the waiting room. Right. Mm, how can you know I, I, we as a community? How can we ensure that you know we we are safe uh, in in a public gathering? One is hand hygiene, mm -hmm. right? Now this virus actually spreads through respiratory droplets, not exactly through the air, through mm -hmm. respiratory droplets. Like when somebody sneezes, there will be minute drops of uh, fluid that comes out and it settles in a lot of surfaces. Now, normally, uh, how it is transmitted is that somebody touches these surfaces mm -hmm. and then touches his face and that transmits the virus from those surfaces through his hands mm -hmm. to the respiratory tract, mm -hmm. right? So, if you keep your hands clean, either using uh, soap and water, regular old soap and water, mm -hmm. or using the alcohol-based hand rub hygiene sanitizer. yeah, sanitizers, uh, that that is one thing we can do. Mm -hmm. Second is, uh, if you see another person who's having respiratory symptoms, coughing or sneezing, keep a one meter distance from them, because that is the normal distance that uh, this uh, respiratory droplets can be spread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Third, if you as a person have uh, respiratory symptoms, mm -hmm. you can wear a mask to protect other people. You don't need an N N95 mask for this, an ordinary surgical mask is fine. Right. Yeah, these are the basic ones. All right, so if you take care of just three main points, yeah. uh, you're pretty much well covered. Uh, you and, and, and you have improved your odds. Yeah. <laughs> you have improved your odds. I like that. <laughs> All right, um, so coming back to um, what has happened in the past and uh, yeah, how uh, COVID has come into another uh, you know, strait and is now becoming a pandemic, like what you said. Um, earlier cases have been confined to particular countries and they've been able to curb it. How long did it take for these conditions to actually subside? I'm coming back to the fear factor where you said, unfortunately, you have no answer. <laughs> if, we, if we go by SARS, which mm -hmm. happened in 2003, I believe the epidemic, uh, the, the uh, outbreak was up and running for a few months actually I think it is close to seven or nine months mm -hmm. unfortunately for us mm -hmm. this particular virus is more easily transmitted than SARS mm -hmm. in one month it has crossed the number of cases that we had with SARS in 2003 mm -hmm. now this is a cause for concern however i would still say not a cause for panic because they have done a pretty good job of 
uh, bringing down the number of new cases in China right now. So mm. we know that control is possible. Right. Right. Control is possible. Uh, when you say how long, um, so let us say that in hypothetical scenario, two weeks of no cases and another case pops up later, mm -hmm. will, those two weeks are no longer valid, right? right. It's, it's, it's still going on. So uh, usually in an, in an outbreak like this, when it enters a new country, there will be, it's, it's like a curve. Mm -hmm. It in, initially increases, mm -hmm. then plateaus, then falls off. Then falls. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, many countries are entering the plateau phase or right. in the increasing phase. Right. China, it is is now in the plateau the, phase or, or rather yeah. in the end of the plateau phase and slowly dropping off. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really it's, it, it's, it's going to take some time though, I believe. Yeah, yeah because it's spread it's so spread widely. It's rather the rapidly. Yeah. All right, talking about that, um, there is a lot of myth around it. There is a lot of, uh, you know, whenever something like this happens and then there is a panic in the world, uh, people come up with various conclusions. It also includes and um, yeah, indicates that this was already mentioned in uh, one of their books, which can be religious or if they follow a particular faith, uh, they want to say that it's, it's all been mentioned and it is all a part of the world coming to the end. Do you really think it is right to propagate such thoughts at a situation like there have been a lot of people saying that the world is going to end since uh, a long since while. A, for a long <laughs> time now and the other yeah, world is still going around mm -hmm. so i wouldn't put any stock in that mm -hmm. i'm not uh, putting down anybody's religious faith or anything but mm -hmm. this is my opinion yes mm -hmm. no but how how do we scientifically view this uh, i um in the past, uh, probably uh, what I understand is probably there wasn't so much of uh, awareness or there wasn't a chance for news to spread so quickly. I think the one reason is that, you know, social media. <laughs> <laughs> right, social media. I think the one problem that people face is that they resort to social media for information. Yes, you're absolutely What do you right think? Right. Where, do you, where do we look for actual facts? Definitely not Facebook or social media. <laughs> <laughs> not social media because yeah, anybody can put up anything and uh, yeah, propagate it. So that is if, why we have you on our show today. <laughs> uh -huh. So if you want to actually know what the facts are, I would suggest the official government websites like the Australian uh, Department of Health website, then uh, the American CDC website, then. Uh, you can go for here. Yeah, of course, the WHO website. These three would be one of the, the, the most important ones where you can go for updated information. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that the numbers and facts and figures given there would be even more updated than what you see in mainstream media. Because there will, of course, be a short time lag because before those figures percolate into the news. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you want the uh, if you want to know what exactly is the situation right now, mm -hmm. log into the WHO website and look at it. Or log into the. So it's best to yeah. either go into government websites right. or the WHO. Yeah. They have the right facts and figures that uh, we as lay people are unable to access directly. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um, back to uh, maybe myth. Mm -hmm. I, I do not know mm -hmm. yet, but. When, when this started in China, India being very close to China, yes. we had a very high uh, you know, chance of possibility of being the next nation to uh, get the COVID-19. Uh, however, there was a lot of news that did the rounds. When it didn't come to India uh, until, until very recently, very recent, yes. uh, so what they said was, it's because Indians have a lot of spices and spices can actually prevent COVID-19. What do you have to say? Uh, <laughs> no type of food or food supplement or essential oils or any of that uh, is going to help you prevent COVID-19. The only thing Unfortunately, yeah. COVID-19 does not have a preventive yet. No, it doesn't. Hmm. But what we can do is we can take precautions like precautions. hand hygiene, hmm. uh, refraining from touching your face, mm -hmm. right? and uh, keeping away from people who have respiratory sim uh, symptoms, mm -hmm. keeping a one meter distance while talking mm -hmm. to them. And uh, of course, if you are ill, seek medical attention. Right. 
at the earliest at the earliest uh coming back to uh, another very important thing was this this didn't sound uh, irrational but i don't know how much sense it made because there was another news that did the circles uh, and it said um, drink warm water every time keep your throat moist don't ever let it go dry and you can stop uh, the coronavirus from attacking your body what is it about like i i didn't understand the science someone said if you drink water the virus gets washed down into your tummy and it goes down your intestinal tract and you're done with it you don't have the disease but if it gets into your respiratory system Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's quite a stretch. I know. That's quite a stretch. <laughs> I I know I sound very dumb, but this is what has been coming up on social media, and I wanted to share uh, it with you. Okay. <laughs> Please throw uh, some light. <laughs> okay. Let's speak about what's wrong with that uh, yes. particular uh, <laughs> scenario. So when the virus enters, like I said, somebody gets it on their hands mm-hmm. and then touches their face. Usually right. the eyes. It mm-hmm. enters through the conjunctiva. Mm-hmm. you are not going to wash your conjunctiva in warm water no <laughs> or through your nose mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. now if oh yes there was another round of uh, news that said uh, giving a saline drip to your nose that nasal tract will also help you with uh, covid-19 <laughs> no none of this is going to help none of this is going to help <laughs> right okay so can you explain scientifically what happens so yes uh, either it goes in through your eyes or it touches it, it your face it enters enters through the mucosa uh-huh. it multiplies inside the cells locally mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now what you're doing by washing it out is just you're washing out the mucus on top of those cells you're okay. not doing anything to the cells there. Mm-hmm. so it multiplies there then uh, it can either um, in many cases it remains there causing just a mild fever and uh, mild respiratory symptoms like a cough but in some cases it can descend down mm-hmm. into your lungs causing a pneumonia mm-hmm. from there uh, it can cause multi organ failure and uh, yeah so can, is that the route that usually covid-19 takes uh, so you end up with a respiratory disorder which may translate into a pneumonia, pneumonia yeah. and yes. that is probably the reason for yes. this yes. okay. pneumonia and uh, multi organ failure that's a usual sequence mm-hmm. and uh, well when you look at the case of mortality uh, whom what age group does it affect most it's usually the elderly who are at risk mm-hmm. if you take a children and people under 40 the mortality rate is 0.2% or even less mm-hmm. on the other hand in the elderly uh, it steadily increases and uh, from the figures i saw recently uh, people as as you go uh, to the extremes of age uh, really old people like 80 years or 90 years and above the mortality rate can be as bad as 50% mm. so yeah the elderly are at risk other population groups that are at risk would be people with pre-existing diseases like pre-existing lung diseases cardiac diseases or uh, people who are immunosuppressed or cancer kind of thing those kind of thing mm. uh well You, does smoking have something to do with this yes smokers are at a higher risk uh, of contracting or rather getting the serious kind of infection yes why, why do you say so uh that is what the figures have shown so far mm-hmm. when you uh, when you see a uh, one in five people or one in six people are going to have a serious illness that is that is the current understanding right now All right now when you look at people who have had the serious illness smokers mm-hmm. are disproportionately represented in those people right that is one reason second uh, the mechanism could be that the tobacco smoke itself could kind of depress the local immunity of the respiratory tract respiratory tract right. you have these small cilia or hairs that actually throw up the mucus and uh, mm-hmm. so, and you can spit it out which mm-hmm. actually trap these organisms mm-hmm. now uh, tobacco smoke is known to paralyze these cilia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah it makes sense that uh, smokers are going to be at a higher high risk, risk. Yes. Mm-hmm. uh anyone any other precaution that you can take during this this time yeah we talked about smokers right now mm-hmm. so yeah any, now, any other now would be a really good time to quit smoking <laughs> to quit smoking yeah. <laughs> i think that's a that's a great message and yeah. that th- this could be a very motivating reason why you should just quit smoking as well anyway thank you so much dr sina you have uh, you know been a very precious uh, person at this time of need for us because we understand that there have been so many stories doing its rounds and we definitely needed someone to help us with 
the facts and um, you've done that so well. Thank you so much for spending time with us on the icon. You're welcome. Thank you.